he gets there. The alternative media, Jerry. That's where you hear the truth. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. And with that, I'm going to hit the button and call our buddy Chris for Mary Jane Report as we launch the debut installment, hopefully, here of your Mary Jane Report. Of course, always technical issues to surmount, but I believe we have Chris from Mary Jane Report. Are you there, buddy? Yes, I am. Oh, you sound so nice on the other end there. I'm sorry. I probably, how does it sound? It probably sounds pretty shitty. Ah, you're okay. Ah, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just using the built-in, and it's noisy. And, you know, of course, we spoke for two hours the other day, and it sounded great, and I hadn't had one issue. And I tried it this morning. It was fine. Then right before I'm about to, you know, do it with you, it just kind of, I'm having an issue with the Skype. And, the, you know, I'm not used to putting it all together, but, you know, for next time, I'll figure it out. Well, of course, in the, in the words of uh, Bill O'Reilly, fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> yeah. He was a little louder with it, though. Fuck it! <laughs> Fuck it! We'll, we'll do it live. So, our buddy Chris here started a blog called MaryJaneReport.blogspot.com, and he puts out, basically, lists of links to keep us up to date on what's going on in the world of weed. A really interesting story, Chris, I want to lead off with with our discussion here on the Mary Jane Report. And it takes us to the District of Criminals. <laughs> At 8 o'clock in the morning on Inauguration Day, the D.C. Cannabis Coalition will be handing out thousands of joints, all for free, right here on the west side of DuPont Circle. Now, they tell me this is all in protest, but the real protest will begin as they march all the way down to the National Mall, where they plan to, quote, stink up the inauguration. So, I I just wanted to play that that brief clip. (laughs) So, activists in D.C. are rolling... In D.C., just like that. We have to do like that, James. Right, right in D.C. So, uh, rolling thousands of joints, and they're going to light them up, actually, four minutes and 20 seconds into Trump's speech. So now, Chris, do you, do you predict any backlash from this, from the, from the Weed Fest at inaugural? Uh, well, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, I think that's not enough. I think it should be 420,000, and they wouldn't be able to keep up with it at that point. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing the significance of DuPont Circle, too, because this whole... This whole reefer madness is starting in the 30s, which set up DuPont and Monsanto today with their power. Um, I just I love the fact that it's at DuPont Circle where they're, you know, they're going to initiate this because, um, you know, I don't have to tell you, but a lot of people don't know about the history of um, how, how this started in the 30s was just the power structure at the time shut down. And it really wasn't about the joints and smoking. It was about hemp. And I know you know this, James, but uh, it, that's exactly what it was about. It was about hemp and the plastic industry and DuPont and William Randolph Hearst with these posters that, you know, uh, smoking is the devil. So that, you know, they just demonized it, basically. But, but their main, uh, uh, what they were going after was to shut down hemp, which was the biggest competitor to their plastic industry, the logging industry, which William Randolph Hearst not only controlled the press, but he also had a logging company that was connected with DuPont. Um, so, yeah, I, it's, it's kind of, you know, like I said, the significance of DuPont Circle on top of the whole thing. So to answer your question, I don't know. I, I hope they're going to leave them alone. It is legal there, but I don't know if it's legal to, to, to smoke it in the street, you know, but uh, we'll, it, we'll see. It, it is not legal to smoke <laughs> it in the streets. So they go on in this report, which, again, we'll include in the show notes, and we'll include also those links of, of what you're talking about right there because that gets down to the nitty-gritty. That gets to okay. the heart of the matter, the DuPonts, the Rockefellers, Ro- yeah. Rockefeller Medicine. So it is not legal for them to light up joints. The interesting way that it's gone down in D.C., they've gone full legalization. It's legal to possess it up to to two ounces on your person. That's that's a lot of weed. Um, It's legal to grow, and it is legal to give away, which is what they're going to do at this event. There's no sales. They're just handing it all out. That's right. Well, maybe, maybe Donald Trump will partake and shock us all. Well, you and I, I believe, joked in our inner conversation as well that, you know, the one main thing that Donald Trump could do to basically shut everybody up for a long time would be yeah. on day one just to write an executive order that says cannabis is no longer Schedule 1. Or I, Absolutely. And what he even said in his own words, that leave it up to the states, and that's, what this, that's what's happening. The states are, are creating this, this little mini-revolution against the prohibition of Mary Jane. Yep. So I find the the marijuana the the marijuana angle an interesting one to what's obviously going to be a pretty sketchy and and looks like violent inauguration. There's lots of people call. I mean, it's basically we were talking on Twitter the other day. Get familiar with the term agent provocateur because there's probably a bunch of leftist oh. terror coming back very soon. Unfortunately, 
Yeah, that's just pretty sad. But um, like I said, maybe they should just you know helicopter airdrop for you know more like four hundred twenty thousand joints, and everybody smoke up, and then at that point, even the agent provocateurs might just hang out and, and eat some Cheetos and listen to Trump instead of creating violence to make it look like it's somebody else, you know. So let's go, actually, as we're talking about letting the states decide, let's actually go to Massachusetts now for our second story as we engage with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Now, she's, of course, even referred to here in the Washington Post as the firebrand. Oh, no, wait. It's, it's Truth Out that calls her a firebrand Democratic senator. Elizabeth Warren, known for championing the working class. So now, what are you watching with relation to Elizabeth Warren and cannabis? Well... It's it's you look at the history. I think it was 2015. She came out and um, uh, you know she, she they the audit the Fed bill came out and she was against it, and that right there to me showed her true colors because I, I you know I actually liked her for a while I, for, for the most part, but it depends on your actions when it came down to it. So while tie this in is what I'm saying is the the monetary system now she's saying that you know and a lot of people are saying it and I was at first too when I thought about it. Well, if we let the cannabis shops, the dispensaries across the country in the states where it's legal medicinally and across the board start using the banking system. That's like, it's almost like they're making it seem like Elizabeth Warren is leading this, you know, uh, today to, you know, let, let them use the banking system. Now they do have issues, obviously, with having all that cash security issues, but I think that the other end far outweighs the problem because, you know, the war on cash, that's, this will be the, the power structure, the, the, the money changer, the Federal Reserve that she's not interested in, you know, auditing. Well, they would be able to, you know, that would be an amazing um, win in their war on cash, you know, and letting and, and bringing in. So it's actually the cannabis world doing the banking monetary system, you know, the money changers a huge favor on the other. So it's, it's completely flip, flipped around as far as the way I see it. Ah, okay. So now that's actually helping me kind of make sense of this. And, and I'll read briefly from Truth Out. Democrat firebrand Senator Elizabeth Warren, known for championing the working class. Now Warren is pushing to create a framework that would allow marijuana-based businesses to access the banking system. If the question of whether your friendly neighborhood cannabis cooperative can access the bank doesn't seem pressing to you, consider this. In 2016, the industry pushed $7 billion in sales, and much of that money was processed in cash transactions. Oh, yeah. So that's where the fear comes in. Oh, it's all cash. Oh, well, you're going to get robbed. So let's all go digital zeros and ones, and it's much easier to track and trace. That, honestly was one of my biggest misgivings here when it became completely legal here in Portland. And I can walk into a recreational store, and I can buy weed, and I can walk out. However, I give them my ID, which, of course, Oregon switched over to the digital DMV. So it's got my digital photo on my ID that they punch into the database that I know goes to the state database. So I love knowing that Oregon knows what and how much weed I may have bought, right? <laughs> Can you imagine if the same structures were on alcohol? Just just ponder that for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I wonder what's going to happen. Are they going to make it where it's, you know, I mean, obviously they're going to still be able to have cash transactions. And, and that's the power of the people right there. And, you know, that sounds too cliched, but if they just, you know, um, create that, just pay with cash instead of using their credit cards, I doubt that's going to happen, you know, with our debt-based, you know, system here. But, uh yeah, I just kind of looked at it that way. I flipped around. That's what we talked about the other day, and you know that's why we're talking about it now because it, it is a it is it makes it look like it's it's this compassionate quote unquote liberal thing to do and work with the with the dispensaries. But honestly, they just want their money and the, exactly what you said to put it into the digital ones and zeros and into the you know the Federal Reserve private base monetary you know uh, you know the money changers again. I just the, the money changers to me is is the perfect word for it, and uh, that, that's what I think that you know the, I'm I'm not saying she's doing this on purpose. But that's what this is. You know, that's what this will be if we take away the power. I mean, they gave us this funny money, and now they don't want us to use it. Now that this is, you know, the, the, the war on cash that's been going on the last couple of years, it's, it's just unbelievable. And that's my biggest, you know, my biggest frustration now in seeing basically the same structures that got to profit off the prohibition are now going to get to turn around and profit off of the exploitation. Yeah, absolutely. And make it look like they're doing, you know, the Green Rush a big favor. Yep. So, fortunately, in a lot of these situations, and fortunately the way that a lot of the laws are being passed, you can grow it yourself. You can give it away. I think that, for me, is the really powerful part that gets to the, the, the cliche that I now use a million times too much. The toothpaste is out of the tube. 
Absolutely. That in a lot of those ways, it's already it's already out and it's already happening, and they're not going to be able to sort of roll this back. Oh, absolutely not. And that actually ties back to the whole what we started with with the Dupont and the plastics industry and the petroleum and the oil and bottling it, selling it to you. And why? And and you know, obviously the, with the with modern medicine to modern medicine, of course, with the Rockefeller based uh, Carnegie Institute Rockefeller. Uh, but yeah, so it's 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 just this whole full circle thing of you know we can bottle and sell it to you. We don't want you growing your own food, fuel, medicine, and you know, and once back to the hemp thing again, I forgot to mention that a lot of some people don't know the difference between hemp and cannabis. Cannabis are the buds you smoke. Hemp is more stalk based, which is fiber, which is where they get the oil from, which is helping the kids with seizures. Um, so it's it, and that's the industry from that fiber, which is the the food, the fuel, the plastics, which is what you know this whole Dupont Circle thing. Like I said, uh, you know, pulling it back to that again, it's the irony of that. And that's honestly that's uh, the hope, the industrial side, and and those are the things that you know. You saw Republicans and Democrats get together over, now by Republicans and Democrats, I mean Ron Paul and Barney Frank, and maybe even Bernie Sanders. They, they year after year, would introduce the Industrial Hemp Farming Act, meaning let people grow industrial hemp for rope and paper and oil. Yeah. And maybe, again, if we have this big states push, you know, I've been talking with my dad is involved in, in West Virginia business and politics, they're now maybe getting a little bit of the fever for industrial hemp. Oh, I mean, and that honestly, James, what's going on is 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 historic, and it's amazing. But it's funny how they use cannabis to demonize hemp, and now cannabis is going to bring back hemp because that's where I think the major industry in this country is going to be. I mean, I really see where Wall Street. It could be five years, ten years from now. It's going to literally be a commodity hemp because. It is just so powerful, and they, like you said, they can't stop this. So they're just going to have to hop on board, and that's when you're going to see the whole entire, you know, uh, you know. And once again, the people fighting to the point where we want to grow this, you know, the, the government shouldn't have to give us permission to do any of this. But obviously, we're in this, this sad state right now, fighting against it. That's right. So for our third and final story here, maybe a little bit less of a story. And again, we're talking to Chris from the Mary Jane Report. And this is our maiden voyage of the monthly installments of the Mary Jane Report. The idea is the third Wednesday of every month, we're going to have Chris from Mary Jane Report on to talk about some of the most important stories going on in the world of weed. So I am glad that you are here, Chris. And some of the things... I'm, I'm so psyched to be here, man. I think you're great. I appreciate it, my friend. I appreciate it, my friend. So something last thing we talked about when we, we talked on the on the phone for a while this this past weekend, and this goes back to you know walk walking me walking into the store here in Oregon and buying weed. Strains, the different styles. You know, I mean, back back in the day, back on the East Coast, back in the college days, you texted or well, he didn't even text. You paged <laughs> dude, and he came to your house <laughs> and you bought the weed he had. wasn't a lot of choice going into it. Now, there's flavors, there's tastes. You can find out what you want, what you need, what you like, and what you don't like. Now, I've honestly, fortunately, been able to go back to a little bit of black market. And I've actually got a Media Monarchy fan and supporter who is a grower here in the Portland area. And he grows some of his own strains. So I love, and we'll mention even some of my favorites. I think some of them are known, some of them are strains he's kind of inventing on his own. My favorites that I've been enjoying from him, Triple Cheese, which I think is based off a of blue cheese strain. President, not sure. <laughs> Robot Kingdom, and those are all essentially a bit more THC Indica, which I'm more into. Oh, I, I love these names because the whole creativity comes out, and, and, it's, and it's great how Mary Jane fuels that. <laughs> and the, you know, the simplest definition maybe for people as well is this is maybe sort of an introductory installment. Sativa and indica are the two main styles of marijuana. Sativa is going to be more of an up, a more high, a more, I'm going to do stuff and get engaged and clean the entire house or paint or that kind of style. The indica, you can joke and say, it's indica the couch. <laughs> so Critical Cure is one that he's also been growing, and that is a high CBD strain. So that's more of a body high. That's more of the feelings, again, that we've talked about with treatments of, of other folks. So I turn it around to you, just like I did this past Sunday, and ask you, what are your favorite strains to smoke? Um, well, first I'll say that I don't really smoke. I know you, you were kind of not shocked, but uh, I thought it was, you know, you thought it was interesting that I, I, I'm just such a, uh, I used to years ago a little bit more, for, for honestly, for medicinal purposes to help me sleep. I was born with a lot of health issues. I have a heart, uh, a genetic heart issue, and 
and that never bothered it. But over the last decade, 15 years, I really maybe once or twice a year uh, for, you know, through the holidays, I'll have a, you know, literally four or five hits a year probably. And recently I did try a couple strains to get to, to your question here. Um, Canatonic, who I really loved, which was, uh, you know, it's the high CBD one. I think you, you talked about, I think you've heard of that one. And a Grape mm -hmm. Ape was more... Um, straight up help help me sleep one night. I tried that for insomnia, but um, yeah, those were the two that I, I blueberry thirty two. I don't think I tried that one yet. It smells really good though. Man, I, and honestly, and we're and we're pretty much out of time here. And I appreciate you so much coming on here for the first installment of the Mary Jane Report. I like to wrap up this first installment because for me, hopefully, the audience has the same feeling. You're not talking to a couple of stoners who just want to smoke, smoke, smoke. Yep. I was so surprised, Chris, when you said you're like, oh, I don't smoke. I need it for health. Yeah, that hopefully between the two of us can kind of show the different sides and how we want to continue to approach this. So there is your inaugural installment of the Mary Jane Report. We will have all of those links up. And, buddy, I will try and drive the traffic to maryjanereport.blogspot.com, and we will be in touch very soon. All right. Thank you, James. All right, buddy. Take care. There goes Mr. Chris from Mary Jane Report, your inaugural installment. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.